Well, good evening and welcome to another online Bible study for our folks here at Carmichael Baptist Church. It is a Wednesday night Bible study. And of course, I'm with, I am Pastor Bill Brown with Carmichael Baptist Church. Imagine someone sending you a registered letter, a knock on your door, and there's somebody officially from an attorney's office saying, listen, I have somebody that has died and has made you a part of their will. You have an inheritance and I want to talk to you about your inheritance. Well, that's exactly what we're looking at in this particular message. And we're going to talk about your inheritance. If you are a born again believer, if Jesus Christ died for you, rose again from the dead for you and is seated upon the throne of God for you. If you have a faith and have been born again in Jesus Christ, uh, I should say if you have a faith in Jesus Christ, if you've been born again, you will have that. My title, let's get into this so we can start looking at what your inheritance is. And I hope you don't get disappointed because you're not going to get much now. Well, in comparison to what you're going to get. You do get something, but there's more to come. Your inheritance comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, where it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Thank God for his mercy and grace and giving to us spiritual life in begatting us or causing us to be born again, to be made new. Praise God that he has given us a living hope, a hope that it will exert itself and influence upon us in this dispensation or era. You see, we can thank God that we have an eternal inheritance. And this is something that is for every born again believer. This is, as this scripture states, your eternal inheritance. And by the way, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit ought to be speaking to you right now because the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And then what does he say in Romans 8 and 17? And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. There is coming a day when your inheritance will become real. How exciting is that? Well, I'm going to pray that uh, you will be like the church at Ephesus as far as Paul was concerned, that God would open your eyes that you might see the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You see, all too often, we worry about the money in our pocket, or we worry about the strength of our bodies. Well, I want to tell you that we have riches that really we don't know a whole lot about. We're going to get some view, portions of the view of that. And there are riches that are reserved in the heaven for you. So we're going to be looking at um, three things tonight about the inheritance. Number one, we're going to look at the source of your inheritance. Where did it come from? And every one of these, we're just going to barely cover, just a little bit, because there's a lot there. We're going to be looking at the source of your inheritance. We're going to be looking at the substance of your inheritance. What is it? And then we're going to look at the security of your inheritance. There's a lot of people have had an inheritance and they've flittered it away. It's gone. It no longer exists or it was stolen. Um, all kinds of things. Well, let's begin with the source and begin to see, first of all, from Ephesians 1, 
18 through 20, that he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, what we talked about just a minute ago, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, we are also God's inheritance as God is our inheritance. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. God is the source. And it's through Jesus Christ, whom he raised from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places where he awaits until all of his enemies will be placed under him and made his footstool. When Christ rose from the dead, we rose from the dead and we were given an inheritance. This inheritance, as we see in this scripture, was wrought in Christ. And as we already saw in our text, we are kept by God for that reserved inheritance. Because we are in Christ already, we have a secured inheritance. And we're going to kind of look at that and save it, of course, till that last point. But I do want to make mention of just the fact that this will all be a glorious public display of our inheritance being given to us. Same way that much of the uh, uh, people who receive these letters of Ephesians and Galatians and Romans, where we'll find the concept of inheritance and the heirs and such there, it was an act that they were familiar with as Greeks. And it was a public thing that was done and to let people know that, listen, you and I, this is having to do with our eternal covenant of redemption, and it includes being made rightful heirs. And he gives us all of the rights of a son, of the inheritance of a legal son. You're not going to be second place. You're not going to be down the list. Everyone has an inheritance. In fact, look at John chapter 1 excuse me, in verse 12, where he says, but as many as received him, to them gave he, who's he? God. He gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That word power is not dunamis or the dynamite or the strength. That is exousia. He gave authority to us to become the sons of God. We have the authority to claim our inheritance. You can't claim it early, but you can claim it now in hope. If you look to also, not at Romans 8, 17, but at Romans 8, 15, just prior to that, he says, for if you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, of making us full sons, and this is how and why we cry, Abba, Father. You see, God chose his heir before the foundation of the world, and he chose us in Jesus Christ to inherit all that God has created. In fact, God gave it to man. He lost it, and so Christ came to redeem that creation, and that includes us, that's part of our inheritance, that we might inherit the world. Now, a lot of people look for the prosperity of this world. They want the riches of this world. Well, Christian, your wealth is not in this world. Your wealth is in the world to come. Your inheritance is the same as Jesus Christ. In fact, I will say, your inheritance is Jesus Christ. You are joint heirs. And this inheritance was given by God and given by grace. You don't earn it. You can't do some work or chore to gain this inheritance. In fact, there was a man once that said, what must I do to gain or to earn or to inherit eternal life? You don't have to do anything. In fact, you can't do anything. 
It comes by grace. Look at Galatians 3 and 18, where he says, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. That's talking about the seed of Abraham. That's talking about the nations that were going to call Abraham blessed and that all of us would be blessed because of Abraham. That's through Jesus Christ. We see the same thing in Romans chapter 4, and verse 14. It says, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made none effect. But our promise, our inheritance is of God, and it's the promise of God. It is the grace of God. The inheritance doesn't come to you because you worked hard for it or were well liked or maybe just liked more than somebody else. It is purely by grace apart from any personal merit on your part. It is all going to be to the praise and glory of God's grace. In fact, one other scripture in Revelation 21 and 7, he that overcometh shall inherit some things, part of the things. No, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. What is it that overcometh? Even your faith. How does that faith come to us? It's by the grace of God, the gift of God through Jesus Christ. And what does he say? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And part of that is that I will be his God and he shall be my son. I love this. You and I have this inheritance that's given to us by God. It's by grace and it was confirmed by the giving of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 through 14 it says, in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest or down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. I, I love that fact that you begin to look at the Holy Spirit as God's pledge. It is God's promise that you have an eternal inheritance coming. The Holy Spirit certifies that you are a child of God and that you have all the rights and privileges of a mature son. That includes, and I don't want to get too far into the substance of our inheritance, but I will mention it, that includes making us fit to be an inheritor. One of these days, look, which is the eternal, or which is the earnest of our inheritance until what? until the redemption of the purchased possession. In other words, until the day that you are completely redeemed from corruption and mortality of the flesh. You, my dear friend, if you are a believer, if you're born again, you are an inheritor of eternal life and you will receive a glorified body and freedom from sin and from death. Now, because I've already made mention of the fact of this source and then the substance already, I want to go ahead and begin to look at the substance of our inheritance. In other words, what is it? It's nice to know that we're inheriting something, but what is it? Well, God purchased this right for us through Jesus Christ. That divinely purchased possession, number one, it's freedom from the coming wrath of God. There is a wrath coming upon this world. There is a world that will be destroyed by fire, but I am saved from wrath through Jesus Christ. That divinely purchased possession is also the obtaining of the glory of Jesus Christ. In other words, that you and I will have a glorified body without any corruption, without any defilement, it is the fact that it is a divinely purchased possession that we will be a royal priesthood and holy nation and we will walk in the light as he is in the light. The substance of our inheritance is to be a child of God. That is rich. That is all the spiritual riches that we have need of 
To know God in a personal way is our inheritance. It's also part of our inheritance that God will show us off, that we will be placed before the Father and he will declare that we are without any blemish. God has given us an inheritance that says he will never ever be ashamed of us. That's our inheritance. How awesome is that to think that one of these days that we will stand before God and we will not be embarrassed or ashamed that he will always care for us as a son and he will always treat us as. David, when he was writing in Psalm 16 and 5, he said, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my life. We are given a new life, which will one day when we are fully redeemed, will lead to an incorruptible and an eternal life, talking about even our body at that time, with God. The substance of our inheritance is making us fit for heaven making us fit for the kingdom, making us fit for the new heaven and the new earth. It is changing us through that new birth. Look again at our text of what we said. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. We have a hope in the future by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to what? To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away and reserved in the heaven for you. Those four things I'll bring up a little bit later when we're talking about the security of our substantive inheritance that we have. But I want you to see that our inheritance is the righteousness of Christ and his vicarious death entitles us to that immortal incorruptible body, the glorified body, the same as he had. This is all part of the word of grace. In Acts 20 and 32, he says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You won't be left out. Never will you be left out. Never will you diminish, be diminished. Listen, your inheritance is secured among all them which are sanctified. And that life will never end. That place, that position will never be diminished or defiled. Let me show you in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15 where he talks about it also. Here he says, and for this cause, he is the mediator of a New Testament. That's why we talked about, or I, I may have mentioned it because this is the second time I've done this one, talked about that eternal covenant of redemption. And that's why Christ died. And when he died, he secured our inheritance. It says by, that by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive what? the promise of eternal inheritance. I love that. We receive an eternal inheritance. So let's go ahead and look at that last point of the security of your inheritance. Again, let's go back to our text and see it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the dead to an inheritance. What kind of an inheritance? Incorruptible, undefiled, won't fade away, and it's reserved in the heavens for you. Those four things are awesome when you start looking at them and what they mean. It's incorruptible. In other words, it's a perfect inheritance. It is free from any corruption, and it cannot be corrupted. It cannot waste away. Again, a lot of times people inherit great wealth or possessions in this world, 
And that's great, be nice, but our inheritance is not of this world. It's of the next world and it will never waste away and it can never be lost. It uses the word undefiled. In other words, it's free from sin. It's free from defect. There are no legal defects or legal loopholes that will cause you to lose your inheritance. The nature of your inheritance is free from any possible defilement. And then thirdly there, it fades not away. It will never diminish. It will never lose its luster or its glory. It won't wither away. It won't rust. It cannot be stolen before you get there. It will never lose its value. What is valuable today in this world may have, may have no value in the future. Imagine someone inheriting a stack of banknotes from the Confederate uh, U.S. at that time. They're worthless. They might have some historical value now, but they're not going to be worth the money. There are a lot of things that in times past, they had something that was there that was of great value. And in fact, it may be that I've inherited something from my parents that at one time was it cost a little bit or maybe a lot. But today it absolutely has no value except that it was my parents, except that it was my father's or my mother's. And that's what gives it value to me. But listen, these are the things that we're talking about that it will never be devalued. Imagine inheriting and you're told this great mansion full of furniture, very opulent, all of the things and a great deal of land around it. And so you travel there, you get there and all of a sudden you see that the land grown over with weeds, not been cared for for 20 or 30 years maybe. You see the house and the roof has collapsed, the rain has come in, the furniture or the, even the building has been vandalized or stolen. What sounded like riches at first to you because of the natural decay in this world and because of the wickedness of men may have no value. In fact, for you to do anything with any of that may cost you more than you could possibly afford. So its value is gone. Well, our inheritance is not only incorruptible, undefiled, fadeth not away, but it is protected and reserved in heaven for you. The same for you. You are kept for, by the power of God, and so is your inheritance. All of this security of our inheritance should do something. Notice again our text, what Peter says about our inheritance, and then notice the next verse, verse 6. Wherein, with that inheritance, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Praise God, one of these days, you know what? I'm going to be rich. I'm rich now spiritually, but one of these days, I'll have a mansion. One of these days, I'll be a part of his kingdom. One of these days, I'll be part of that royal nation, that royal priesthood. One of these days I will rule and reign with him, wherein you greatly rejoice in the substance of your inheritance, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. You know, the point of that is that the security of our inheritance gives us reason to rejoice despite any difficulty we may encounter in this life during this era. You, you see, that gives us hope for the future and it causes our eyes to look up and forward into eternity to be able to endure what we have to endure today, knowing what we will have as our inheritance in the future. Gill says, that when you look at this next verse, it is something better experienced than expressed. Look at verse eight. Whom having not seen, ye love. 
in whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What a blessing. Your inheritance cannot be destroyed. It cannot be defiled. It cannot decay. It's safe. It's secure. And all of these things give us, because Christ is the greater part of that substance, it is God and our relationship with him that is the substance of our inheritance. It cannot be destroyed. It cannot be defiled. It cannot decay. A lot of human relationships are corrupted for one reason or another. Some of those human relationships decay. Some of those human relationships can be destroyed. But the fact that I am a child of God and my inheritance is my God, that can never be destroyed. That will never decay. It will never lose its luster. It is eternal. It is free from the corruption that you and I are so familiar with in this world. It is free from the infection of sin and it will never lose its beauty, never. Our view and our appreciation of our eternal inheritance will never diminish or fade. That is your inheritance. And the Bible is your legal document, while the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is your down payment, your security, that it is coming. One of these days, my dear friends, you and I will find ourselves face to face with our God. That's our substance of the inheritance, is our relationship with him. That can't be destroyed. We've got a mansion awaiting us. We've got a kingdom, a place to rule and to reign with him. But the greatest of all of these, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at one last verse, 2 Corinthians 1 and 22, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. When you begin to get down or thinking things aren't that great, remember what you've been given. Remember what your inheritance is. God has given it to you by grace. He has confirmed it in his word and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The substance of that inheritance is an eternal relationship with God. It is an eternal life, an incorruptible, undefiled life, something that can never be changed. That's your inheritance. And I pray that has blessed you in this study. Lord bless you. Come back and join us next week. See you later.